कि भगवान उवास सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड से भगवान इज वेरी वर्ड इज वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट यू शू नॉट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वट डज इट मीन भवा भवा मीन्स ऑपुलेंट एंड भगवान मीन्स वन हु हैज गॉट ऑपुलेंट इस संस्कृत ग्रामर there is a affix called bath bath means position astarthi uh, batup when a when the sense of position is there this bath affix is there so bhava bhava means uh, opulence and plus bath that means one who has got opulence and the first person of uh, that uh, sound becomes bhagavan this is the meaning of bhagavan now what are the opulence you have got every one of you have got the idea of opulence <clears throat> what are those opulences wealth riches and strength or influence and fame and uh, uh, beauty knowledge and renunciation these six things are called opulence one has got one if a man has got sufficient riches he attracts rich man attracts poor man this is a Uh, instrument of attraction. Uh, sometimes we also approach very this man, give us some contribution. Although you are Krishna conscious, so richness has got attraction. We cannot deny it. Of course, for Krishna we can do anything. Uh, we have no restriction. For Krishna service we can do anything. So. Anyway, richness. If a man is very rich, wealthy, he attracts. That the these are the six opulences which at, which attracts. Uh, then, if a man is very strong, he is all he also attracts others. Uh, a strong man, either by influence or by his bodily strength, uh, he is attracts. Oh, because there is a strong man, many women is attracted. So the strength is also another feature of attraction. Well, strength, and then fame. If a man is very famous, ah, oh, just take any famous man of the world. If he comes in this room, oh, thousands of people will come here. Ah. Oh. When Gandhi was alive, I read one uh, news from the newspaper in India that uh, in some Italian city there was great crowd. Oh, innumerable people gathered on this station, and nobody could understand uh, why these people are assembled here. Then when they asked. They replied that yeah, we have heard that Gandhi is coming here. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi, but as you heard his name, he was very famous man, politician. So, actually, the news that published that one there was one Mr. Grandy. So he was coming, and people misunderstood his Gandhi. So my point is that a famous man or satrap. These things are attraction, rich, richness, wealth, and uh, strength, and fame, fame. Then beauty, beauty also attracts. Ah, if a man is beautiful, or a woman is beautiful, or many men or women are after him, beautiful. Any beautiful, not only man and woman, any beautiful flower, 
any beautiful picture, anything beautiful that has an attraction, beauty. Therefore, a knowledge, if one is learned, if one is very uh, possessing, uh, much knowledge, just like great scientists, philosophers, or religionists, or preachers, they, they also attract. And renunciation, uh, that is also another attraction. Uh, if a man is in a renounced order of life, renunciation means one has got all these things, richness, fame, beauty, knowledge, but he renounces everything for some higher purpose. <coughs> Just like in our, in our country, for national movement, uh, so many rich men, they renounce everything. Uh, one or two, some of them, perhaps you know, there was one Mr. C. R. Dhan. He was earning fifty thousand dollars a month as a lawyer. He everything renounced. He joined this movement. And perhaps you have heard the name of Nehru. Nehru was a very rich man's son. His father was a very rich lawyer. Uh, his father's history is that uh, in those days uh, there was not a single day when he was not earning five hundred dollars daily. Uh, so he was also a very rich man's son, but he renounced everything, his father's property and everything, and joined this national movement. He went to uh, prison by the government. So renunciation has also attracted. So the definition of God is there. <coughs> Bhagavan. We should know who is God. Yeah. The definition is Aishadjasa Samagrasa Bijasa Jasasa Striya Gyana Bhaira Gayaschaiva Sarayiti Bhagangana. The Sanskrit definition of Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of God. That one who has got the complete wealth, complete strength, complete uh, fame, complete uh, beauty, complete knowledge, and complete renunciation. Renunciation. Uh, giving up everything. In spite of having everything, if one can renounce at a moment's notice, I don't want. It's called, that is called renunciation. So when you find these six things incomplete, then he is God. Uh, this is the definition of God. And these things completely you will find in Krishna. In the history, if you take human history, the Krishna of course was present as a man, personality. But when he was present, all these six things were completely present to Therefore, he was accepted. As in the morning class, we were discussing about the symptoms of incarnation. So, in the Shastra, in the scriptures, these symptoms are given. Similarly, who is Bhagavan? Who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? That is also given. And Krishna, this word, means all attract. Because he has got all these things in complete, naturally he is attracted. Oh. Just like we have analyzed, the beauty attracts, wealth attracts, fame attracts, education, knowledge attracts. So he has got all these attractive features. Therefore, he is completely attracted. Krishna means the supreme attract. This is the meaning of Krishna, and therefore he is Bhagavan. Because he is completely attractive, therefore he is Bhagavan. So here it is said, the Bhagavan who was, Bhagavan who was the best then, writer, he says, the Bhagavan now was said, what? He has already, we have finished ninth chapter. He has already said, Manvanam bhava mad bhakta mad jaji maang namaskuru. 
just become always thinking of me. He just become my devotee. Uh, just worship me. Manmana, uh, manmana bhava madhvakta madhjaji maam namaskuru. Just offer your obedience. Maam eva is this. If you continue these four things, what is the what are the four things? Manmana, always fix up your mind in Krishna. That means you become always in Krishna consciousness. And thinking of Krishna uh, and as enemy or as friend, sometimes you think of enemy also. Oh, oh the enemy is like becoming. Oh, he is uh, my enemy is becoming very strong. So not that sort of thing. Bhakti means uh, that there is a, everything has got definition. That is called sadhana. What is that? Bhakti, devotion. Devotion means uh, anusilanam, uh, cultivation of Krishna knowledge favorably, not unfavorably. Sometimes. To kill some enemy, we uh, do many things. Uh, to kill our enemies in the laboratory, we think of uh, manufacturing atomic nuclear bombs. And that is also thinking. But that sort of thinking is not bhakti. Uh, therefore, bhakti means anukulena krishna anusilanam. And favorably, you have to think of Krishna. Not unfavorable. No. If you think of Krishna just to kill him, just like Pansa, his maternal uncle, he wanted to kill his nephew. Krishna was the nephew of Kansa. He was always thinking of Krishna. How to kill? Him? How to kill? Him? So uh, that is unfavor- unfavorable thinking. Not that sort of thinking. Manmana Baba. Just thinking. Just be always thinking of me does not mean that you shall think of Krishna, the Supreme Lord, as your enemy, but as your friend or lovable object. Manmana Bhagavad Bhakta. Bhakta means you should be always ready to render loving service to Krishna. That sort of thing. Manmana Bhagavad Bhakta Madhjaji. Just become a, a worshipper of Krishna and Mang Namaskuru and offer your obeisances unto Him. By following these four principles, Mami Vaishasi Asamsaya, Krishna says to Arjun, my dear Arjun, if you follow these four principles, then surely you will come back to me, back to home, back to God. This has already been explained in the last verse of ninth chapter and in the uh, tenth chapter. The Lord said, Bhagavan was, the Supreme Lord said, Bhuya eva mahabahasthinume paramabhachi. I have already said, what is the process of Krishna consciousness? Now you hear further more information. Jatihang Priyamanaya Bhakshami Hitakamana. Because Krishna and Arjuna were, uh, I mean to say, in relationship uh, of friends. Therefore, he said, Jatihang Priyamanaya. Because you are my, my dear, you are my dear friend, therefore, uh, Bhakshami, I am speaking to you. That means the ten chapter of Bhagavad Gita, what is spoken there, it is ne- not meant for any ordinary person. It is meant for those who are a little bit advanced in Krishna consciousness. One who has accepted Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he is conscious about him. Eh? For them it will be really suffering. For others it will not be really suffering. Oh. Why? They're just like you have got a beloved son, little child. Oh. You are always thinking of it. 
you are speaking, oh my child, this morning, you are playing like this, or you are so dancing like this. So you are thinking, you are speaking, others may be disturbed. Why? Because it is not his, he, the child is not his. He has no love for him. He has no love for him. He doesn't like to hear. Oh, therefore, it is said here, and this part of speech in the 10th chapter, it is meant for hmm, such persons who are a little advanced in Krishna. That's why confidential things is spoken to a very confidential friend or relative. Similarly, this is hmm, little more uh, confidential than what is spoken in the ninth chapter. Tenth chapter. Jatihang Priyamanaya Bhakshami Hidakam. Because you are my dear friend and for your benefit and a friend is always value of a friend. And what to speak of Krishna? If Krishna becomes one's friend and he becomes value, then what do you want more? Uh, you know that we have already described Krishna. The all and weakest, all strength, all knowledge, all beauty, and all fame, and all nuances and fear. So if he becomes your friend, if he becomes your well-wisher, then what do you want more? If you have got a friend who is very rich and very powerful, uh, then do you think Anything required more. Uh, a friend can sacrifice everything for a friend. And here is a friend where there is no limitation. There is no limitation of wealth. There is no limitation of uh, favor. So here uh, Lord Krishna says, I am speaking to you for your benefit. If you become Krishna conscious in either of the five relationships. A devotee becomes related with Krishna in five different transcendental mellow. One can be related as silent devotee. Silent devotee means he knows Krishna is very great. Krishna is very great. True. God is great. So accept this principle that is also devotee. He does not do anything for God, but he admits God is great. That is called silent devotee. Now, if one uh, advances a little more, he wants to do something for Krishna. Uh, just like if you think somebody is very great, very noble, then if you think that I must do something for that. So this is called dasha. First shanta, neutral, then activity begins. Ah. This is better state than the shanta state. In the shanta state, a devotee simply admits the greatness of God. But when he uh, makes a further advancement in, in the understanding of that greatness, that, that is the beginning of Krishna consciousness. When one wants to do something for Krishna. Uh, now here, in this material world, we can do so many things for Krishna. So many things. Uh, what are those things? Uh, uh, now, suppose if you want to do something for somebody, then you must know how that particular gentleman is satisfied. Otherwise, if you want to do something without knowing what does he want, then that is useless. Huh. You must know the mind uh, of the person to whom you want to serve. Huh. Now, what Krishna wants, that is explained in the Bhagavad Gita in various places. What is that? In the fifteenth chapter you will find Krishna says, Mamai Vamsa Jiva Bhuta. 
जीवलोक सनातन मन सष्टाणी इंद्रियाणी प्रकृति स्थानी कर सती ऑल दिस लिविंग एंटिटी दे आर माई पार्ट एंड पार्सल जस्ट लाइक योर सन और योर डॉटर इज द पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ योर ओन बॉडी पर्सनल बॉडी सिमिलरली we are all part and parcel of the supreme god we are all sons of god uh, how is it uh, that is also uh, mentioned in the bhagavad gita uh, in the 14th chapter sarva joni sukantiya sambhavanti murte ya tasam mahajani brahma aham bija padapita the lord krishna says that my dear old john You find so many species of life, ah, uh, eight, ah, uh, uh, eight thousand, uh, eight million, four hundred thousand, eight million four hundred thousand subspecies of life. All of them, they're my son. I am the seed giving father. Uh, here you accept. So every living being, either man, a beast, or ant. Or bird, every, anywhere, ah, they're all sons of God, and they are suffering. Mana sastani indriyani prakriti sthani karasati. They have somehow or other they have come in contact with this material nature, and each and every one of these living entities they are making having a hard struggle for existence. But under the Spell of the illusory energy, they are thinking we are happy. On the whole day, night, they are unhappy. Uh, they, they are, their desires are not fulfilled. They want something, but they are forced to accept them. And uh, this is why this is called hard struggle for them. Nobody is satisfied. Uh, they are always disruption. In this moment, I am your friend. Next moment, I am your enemy. This moment, I am your husband or wife. Next moment, no. Don't see my face. I will not see you. Be gone. So these things are going. So this is called struggle. Uh, I am wanting something, but I am accept. I am forced to. Uh, being bound to accept something else, this is called sir, sir. So this is going. So therefore, Krishna gives you message that these living entities they are uh, very unhappy in this material world under the spell of material energy, under the spell of illusory energy. They are thinking that they are happy in ignorance. Ah. Just like the animals, they cannot know. They do not know what is unhappiness. Uh, when they are in the slaughter house, they will be slaughtered next moment. They are standing and eating grass because they are ignorant. They do not know. Similarly, when human society becomes plunged into ignorance, they do not know what is unhappiness. They are struggle for existence. And therefore, uh, therefore, they are uh, in unhappiness. They are never satisfied, full of anxiety. In spite of having all these things, the foolish man says, "Yes, we are advancing in civilization." This is their ignorance and foolishness. So, Krishna conscious person, if they want to serve Krishna, if they want to render some service to Krishna. Their first business is to dispel this ignorance of the human. That is the best thing. That is the best thing. Ah, people have manufactured so many philanthropic ah, association, charitable association, and uh, hospitals, and so many things. But if uh, somebody or if some association. Can enlighten people to the Krishna consciousness. That is the best service to the human society. That is best service to the human. So, if further 
advancement from neutrality that I love Krishna or God because He is great. No, that love is not sufficient. You must render some service to the Krishna. Just like Arjun. Arjun is rendering service to Krishna as a soldier. Krishna wanted that the battle of Kurukshetra should be executed. And Arjun did not like it because oh, it was concerned to his family member, to his brother, and to his. So he did not like it. But when, after hearing this Bhagavad Gita, he became Krishna conscious, he executed the will of Krishna. Krishna wanted that the fighting must continue, so he executed in spite of his own. Uh, conclusion that he would not fight. So this is Krishna consciousness that one has to do. That is better condition simply to know and uh, simply to make God as other supplier. Uh, I love God because He gives me my daily bread. Uh, that is also good, good sense. But better sense is that how we can serve Krishna. If God is giving you bread daily, so you have no duty to return. Eh? God will give you bread, either you want it or not want it. He is giving bread eh, to the cats and dogs and ants and so many animals. So why not to you, human being? Oh, that He will give. Oh. Don't bother about that. Oh. Don't bother about that. Your bread will come. Wherever you may be, either you may remain in America or in Europe or in India, wherever, ah, your bread is already there. Ah, therefore, the same way the Prajatita Kuru, you should ah, rise up to the officer how to serve God. And this is the greatest necessity of the present day civilization. People are suffering due to godlessness. And if you want to serve the people, your society, your country, the whole human society, then try yourself best, try your best. If you just rise up to the occasion of becoming Krishna conscious and just spread this philosophy to the world, there will be happiness, there will be peace, and everyone will be. Bless him. Thank you. If there is any question.